So today I'm excited to give you a first look at Scavengers. This is a PvP VE game that blends a bunch of different survival combat mechanics into a sandbox shooter environment, let's call it. All the while, AI enemies and other real players that you're playing against are doing their best to get rid of you and stop you from winning. The team at Midwinter developing the game have sponsored this video, so a big thanks to them. There's a link at the top of the description that you can click on right now to join the closed beta. But first of all, let's dive into what Scavengers is all about. Scavengers is made by Midwinter Entertainment, formed in 2016, and it's run by X343 Industry Leadership, and it has plenty of other AAA veteran developers in its ranks. Midwinter was acquired by the publisher Improbable in 2019, and they'll be acting as the publishers for Scavengers. Now, the main premise of Scavengers is that life on Earth has been nearly wiped out by a large asteroid strike that has shattered the moon into pieces. This has plunged the world into a massive ice age. And at the same time, it introduced a weird infection that's causing animals to mutate and reform into these creatures known as the Scourge. You play as one of the many survivors sent from the Sanctuary, which is a huge space station that's currently orbiting Earth, controlled by an AI called Mother. You have to collect data samples during your visits down to the surface for Mother to analyze upon your return. There are roaming storms that can cause your body temperature to absolutely plummet to dangerously low levels. And at the same time, of course, as I mentioned, there are other enemy players on the map that you've got to deal with, and these storms, they could cover the approach of the Scourge or even those enemy teams that might be looking to steal your data samples. Now, each match of Scavengers has 60 players, with each team having three survivors in them, so that's 20 teams per match. And each of these survivors is an in-game character that you can progress, level up, and equipped with better and more powerful equipment the more you play the game. There are unlimited respawns during a match as long as one of your team members stays alive. If you all die, then you're finished for the round. As the match finishes, you have to head over to a dropship location and board that in order to bank your data points. But in my experience, this turned into a bit of a TDM area where enemy teams would then fight and scrap with each other to try and secure even more data points for themselves after a long match on the surface. And I quite enjoyed this element actually. It's a strong risk reward element of scavengers where you could have been having a tough time all game, but then you get a really important team wipe towards the end and you secure a bunch of points. Or you could be flying high the entire round and suddenly you get yourselves wiped out when you take on an enemy team that's more organized than you are. There's also a marker system in the game where the top teams during a match will have their position revealed to all other teams still active. And that further turns up the heat during PvP battles. Now with all of these elements coming into play, you might expect scavengers to be a bit more PvP focused than PvE. But the map itself for scavengers is so large that you often find the two different play types are very well balanced from the beginning of matches all the way through to the end. At the start, you are going to be doing more PvE stuff, killing off scourge animals and looting areas and strongholds. And then as the match moves on, the PvP elements, they start to appear. You're coming across other teams that are still alive. You start fighting them or maybe you avoid them to go and do some more missions so you can get some more data points. And then towards the end of the round, when you're around that dropship, that's where the PvP becomes its strongest and you are in a team deathmatch situation. The final play area is one kilometer by one kilometer. So it's not those tiny circles that you see in other games of this nature. There's still plenty of room for you to move around and the dropship just becomes that central focus towards the end. But to successfully bank your points, one of your teammates needs to be alive on the dropship when the counter hits zero. If you're not on that dropship, you're not securing your points. If you all get wiped out, you're not securing your points either. Now the characters, the different survivors that you can play as, those are part of the progression system built into scavengers. During a draft phase at the start of each match, you can pick a survivor to play as for that round, and then any experience that you gain during the matches by killing other players, completing missions, looting around the map, killing scourge enemies, all of that goes towards that particular character and the loadout items that you can obtain. 
These include upgraded weapons, equipment like grenades, and even supporter items like ammo crates and medical pieces to keep you and your teammates alive. Each different character, they have their own unique set of equipment and items that they can unlock during matches. So depending on what kind of playstyle you like to run, you might end up focusing on a few specific characters or you might choose to play them all and then adapt your playstyle. After each match, you'll be able to go into the menus and craft different items that you can then put into your loadouts for the different characters. So there's always stuff to do in Scavengers. There's always things to work towards. Now, one thing I want to end on here is the classification of Scavengers. A lot of you might be sitting there thinking, well, this is just another Battle Royale game. But I'd have to disagree with you. It's not a Battle Royale game. Having played it for a few hours now, it's quite a bit different to your standard Battle Royale. It isn't a Battle Royale. Scavengers is more than that. It's like an open sandbox, expansive world game where teamwork and tactics come into play often and you have to make decisions about whether you want to do PvE or PvP. Or you do both. Do you move up on an enemy team and try and take them down to get their loot and gain a better foothold in the match, potentially revealing yourself as one of the best teams left on the map and suddenly you attract more attention? Or do you skirt around the edges? Do you do a load of missions and assignments to build up all of your points and then go for a bigger finish aboard the dropship? The variety of weapons and abilities the characters have, they make for really interesting combinations. And they're going to make sure that the battles you go into are always interesting and different. Scavengers is so much more than the Battle Royale last person standing. There's a lot more going on. And one of the best things, I think, is that you don't even have to be the best team on the map at the end. As long as you extract on that dropship, you might not have the most points, but you're still going to extract. And you're still going to get those points, and you're going to progress your characters. You don't have to win every single round of Scavengers to enjoy it. And you can play it pretty much any way you want to. So if that sounds interesting to you, then make sure you click the link in the description right now to take part in the closed beta of Scavengers, which is running at the moment and you can get yourself a chance to test out the game as it currently stands, and it's likely going to continue changing in the future, and once the game fully releases, the developers fully intend on supporting this too. Thanks again to Midwinter for sponsoring the video, and I'll catch you all in the next one.